Hey, ladies and gentlemen, what's going on? Welcome back. This is Force, and here today, guess what? You won't believe it, but we are once again going to be revisiting the Elder Scrolls Online. Specifically, we're taking a look at the console version. Um, I've got my hands on the PlayStation 4 beta. I luckily managed to get myself a key, thanks to a lovely viewer on Twitter. And um, I've been playing it for... I guess it's been like an hour and a half now. I just went through the beginning tutorial, uh, spent a little bit of time sort of putzing around the main town, and now I'm on, I guess, what we would call a tutorial island. This is Bleak Rock. Uh, a lot of you will probably remember this from the PC beta. God, what was it, like a year and a half ago now? It's been a while, uh, but I I'm actually kind of having fun playing in first person, playing with a controller. You can switch to third person. Uh, the game also allows you, I was pleasantly surprised to see, that lets you zoom back. No, like normally console games will not, this is like a, this sort of, uh, <laughs> this sort of camera pan as far back as this is, this is like a PC hardcore <laughs> MMO view perspective. This is not something that you're typically expect. Uh, from a console, so I was pleasantly surprised to see that they let you actually uh, get a get a viewpoint from this far back. But I would uh, realistically probably play with it like about here, unless we're doing like PvP or something. In which case, yes, you want it as far back as possible so you can see like everything that's going on. Uh, but for the sake of this video, we're probably going to play with the camera right about here, or a lot of the time in first person because I'm actually I'm kind of digging it. I'm not gonna lie. So what I wanted to do with this video is just show you some gameplay, uh, show you what the console version of this game looks like. First of all, can I say right off the bat, this is pretty, like this looks good. I don't, I played on max settings on the PC and I don't remember uh, specifically that some of the lighting stuff has been impressing me incredibly uh, from what I've seen. So I've, re I've really, I don't know, maybe my memory is just foggy. That could very well be it, but uh, there's some... I, I remember thinking that the environments looked good, but I don't. I really... I don't remember it looking this good. Again, though, I, I, I could be crazy. That is entirely a possibility. Uh, so let's, let's jump into the gameplay, but before we do, a couple things that I want to make note of. First of all, there is an FOV slider. I'm actually currently playing with the widest FOV in both first person and third person. So that can be set uh, right over here in the options. And you can see first person FOV, third person FOV. You can set head bob as well. Camera sensitivity, inverting accesses, and... Uh, and then a bunch of other things. There's like audio, auto loot down here. There's audio set, uh, excuse me. Uh, yeah, audio settings for the different volume stuff. Although um, I was a little jarred when I entered the main town because I, I am absolutely positive that I heard someone like talking to their child about what they wanted for dinner. And I'm like, well, that broke the crap out of my immersion. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I guess there's in-game uh, there's in-game voice that, that the game has, and I couldn't see any way to shut it off, which kind of uh, disappointed me. But beyond that, um, I, I, this past hour and a half, I've been having a lot of fun. So let's just take a look at some gameplay. Let's play this for a little bit, uh, show you what it's like, and um, yeah, that's that's basically it. So we're just gonna go through our, this beginning quest line. Again, all I've done so far was the very, very introductory tutorial, which if you blitz through, it takes 15 to 20 minutes, but I really took my time. I walked around and I played for like an hour and a half. I'm like, I'm having a good time. Let me show this to some people. All right, but we're gonna play in first person perspective uh, because I, I feel like with the controller, this just feels, it feels right to me. So, let's talk to Captain Ron. I'm short on good help, and I could use someone capable. Someone like you. Yes. You've seen combat, and I need all the help I can get today. Villagers are scattered across the island. We need to warn them. Oh no, why? We sighted a ship offshore. I've sent my troops to investigate. If it's the vanguard of an invasion, well, we'll need to evacuate. Tell me where. You'll find the people of Bleak Rock all across the island. Darge, the hunter, went to Sky Shroud Barrow. Iman's out at Orkis Hollow with his sister, Rolanda. Sane, my sergeant, is out at Hosen's Folly. Alrighty, sounds good. I will go find your friends. Oh wait, I need to, I need to ask her which one. Uh, tell me where Sky Shroud Barrow is. It's a relic of the Dragon Wars. Some of the villagers claim they saw undead out there. I sent Darge out to get proof. Alright, I'll go there first. Thank you, friend. 
After you find Dodge, keep looking. Will do. Sounds good. All right, so let's uh, let's go ahead and look around. So a couple of a couple of things for, uh, worth note. This is not just the Elder Scrolls Online. It's the Elder Scrolls Online Tamriel Unlimited. Specifically, what that means is this is the buy-to-play version of the game, in which they've got a crown store which you can purchase. I don't know, crown stuff. It says right here, purchase DLC, get customization things. There's bundles, there's uh, consumables that we can buy, like hearty health hash or crown drinks, or we could buy costumes. If you care about RPing, you can buy yourself a wet. I saw Towley streaming today. He was streaming in a wedding dress. I'm like, what the hell are you doing, dude? <laughs> you, can buy, you can buy mounts for crowns. So this is the little, um, it's the vanity item shop. Um, it's the convenience stuff uh, that, that that's from what I understand the 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 route that they're going with this now Also with Tamriel Unlimited there were some adjustments that took place to uh, Combat like casting animations first of all look at this. This is a destruction staff And I remember the heavy attacks being a two-handed wind-up, but now it's just like one-handed thing um, It just looks different than I remember and also I've got this attack here this is my uh, wall of elements, which that looks a lot different than I remember. It looks good though, doesn't it? Am I going crazy or does this look better than I... This looks better than I remember the PC version looking. I could be going insane though. I know I'm gonna, I know I'm gonna keep saying that. Um, so Tamriel Limited uh, came with a bunch of changes. They've added like the, the thievery system. So I could steal stuff and then I'd get... If I'm spotted stealing, I'm gonna get like a... Uh, I'm gonna get like a bounty on my head. So if someone sees me stealing this, I'll get a bounty and I'll have to pay the guards. They're gonna try to fight me or send me to jail or something. So I don't wanna steal. That's not what that's not what I'm gonna be doing here in this video, but you could steal if you wanted to. In the past, before they made these changes, literally I'd like, I'm here in Rana's house. I like talk to her and then I'm like, all right, let me just loot all of your stuff. Like it was kind of weird, but I'm glad to see that they've, um, I don't know, they, they've finally added that stuff. So I don't want to steal the beef. I can read this letter, though. This is equally, this is almost as bad as stealing. I'm, like, going through her personal stuff. But yeah, I can read this letter and, you know. I mean, it, it it's more or less the ESO you remember with some tweaks and changes. Um, that's essentially what it is. Now, let me go upstairs real quick. Because I thought I remember before. I thought there was, like, I thought there was a quest up here before. Maybe there isn't any more, though. Oh no, it was but it used to be the case that you got dumped here and then this guy was just be I can talk to him though. Hey you. Good to see you up and around. Figured you were crossing the bridge to Sovngarde for sure. No, no, no. Where am I? Bleak Rock Island, off the coast of Skyrim. Holzgar found you washed upon the shore. Captain Rana will want to know you're awake. She already knows. Don't worry, dude. All right, let's go back out into Bleak Rock Isle. Here we go. Uh so we need to go and do our first quest. Uh, let me show you guys the control. Oh, I'm sliding off the roof. That's right. Uh, let me show you guys the controls. Uh, let me talk with you about how this whole thing is set up. So if we go into inventory here, or we go, excuse me, if we go into options, it'll show the controls on the right hand side. So as you can see, we've got abilities bound to uh, square, triangle, and circle. The interact and jump button are bound to the same thing. So sometimes, if I feel like there might be an interactable object, like a, a barrel or whatever, and I walk up to it. If it's not interactable, I'll just end up standing there jumping and looking like an idiot. And then also L1 and R1 are set to abilities. You can hold them both down to activate your ultimate. Uh, we've got block on L2, attack on R2, and then it's um, you know, it's the same it's the same thing that you remember. There's light attacks you can spam, or there's heavy attacks that you can charge up for all of the different types of weapons. And you'll be uh, you know, you'll be blocking uh, you'll be blocking heavy attacks from the opponents and interrupting spell casting and stuff like that. There's also a roll that I can do. It's like block and then X, so we can roll in a direction. I can show you that in the third person, so just like that. There you go. Um, and then the arrow keys. The arrow keys let me access quick slot items. I can change the camera distance like you saw me do earlier. I can sheath my weapon or do a weapon swap. And then there's also an emote menu, because that's cool, I guess. Oh, and then uh, map map is bound to the t touchpad in the middle here. So this is kind of nice, although it doesn't... Oh, yes, we can. We can zoom out with uh, L2 and R2. So there's a little zoom feature as well. But anywho, let's go ahead and do our first quest, um, which is going to be to find Darge. And that was just a person that I walked by, I do believe. I do believe that was a, a bona fide person. So if we gotta go go over here, but wait, but wait. 
This individual is in need of help. Oh, and he's not showing up. That's weird. So you look at the uh, the directional menu at the top. In the PC version, if you were to walk by someone who needed help, it would actually show once you got in their vicinity. But it's not showing here. This could just be a beta problem, but there should be an icon. So if I were just out of visual range, like normally there'd be an icon. So right now, like you really couldn't tell if you're just running that there's a quest right there. But there would be an icon with that uh, unfilled in arrow on the directional map, uh, probably just like just to the right of that the eastern load, uh, indicator, but there isn't here. So I hope that that's just a, a beta thing. I mean, the game is launching on console very shortly, so they better figure that out. Curse that death claw! Ate my foot. I had to use my boot and some leather as a tourniquet. Oh, that's terrible! Damn it! I've been tracking the beast for weeks. I call him Death Claw. I finally caught up to him, but it, well, it went badly. Well, I'll get him now for you. Now there's a plan. If you bag him. I'll toss you some coin for your trouble. That sounds excellent. Um, so one of the things that I really enjoyed about uh, the PC version of this game originally, let's find Deathclaw. We can cycle through these with the right arrow key. There we go. Uh, one of the things I really enjoyed about the uh, PC version was just sort of, I mean, this is, a, this is the Elder Scrolls world like in its entirety. It is a massive landscape. And the, with, all of the, uh, with all of the quests uh, fully voiced and like, it's just a lot to explore. Now, the one, the big, well, the biggest problem that I had with the game hasn't really changed. It's that the combat, it's not amazing, okay? Like, it's, it, it isn't. I'm not gonna beat around the bush here. I don't find the combat amazing still. That hasn't changed. It's, it's this, um, I don't believe you can tab target in the console version here. So it's just sort of this, directional like you just have to face in the vicinity so i don't have to like so for example look at my crosshairs i'm not aimed directly at the wolf but i'm close enough so it's gonna hit him you know so it's not it's not directly like skyrim um in that it's like a soft lock system i guess that's what we'll call it uh here for the console version because i can't directly tab on to someone at least i haven't i didn't see it in the controls and i've messed around with the buttons and i didn't see any indicator that that was an option either so yeah it's it's like this soft lock system where as long as you're as long as you're close enough to your target it's gonna hit them you just need to be essentially facing in the direction whenever you fire off your abilities all right here comes death claw actually i kind of remember him being a huge pain in the ass like he could kill us so i'm gonna go ahead and pop up our armor here i've got some armor thing and and i've got my wave where are you death claw okay well welcome to mmos my friends if you're not used to, to, to what that means, uh, de-aggro. This dude just de-aggroed. I got too far out of the, 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 the what was considered the uh, proper range to fight him in, and then he just runs away. But then, then we fight him, and we fight him. And we're gonna be getting into a lot of combat here, because I know I spent the first, you know, 10 or so minutes of this video just sort of chatting, uh, showing off the scenery and doing some dialogue. So I want you to get a good look at the combat. I'm sure a lot of you came here uh, specifically for that, to see something like that. Now again, normally, in a game like this, I'd be playing in third person. And normally, I would not just be playing in third person, but I'd be playing in third person zoomed very far out. Uh, but, you know, given that, you know, it, it, just, it, it just feels right when playing on a controller for me. It just feels right to play this in a first person. I don't know what it is. It's like, I don't want to offend anybody here, but in my personal opinion, it's like the scrub way to play, right? Like you're not, you can't see as much around you and... I'm going to have to head back to town soon, my friend. Lost a lot of blood. How goes the hunt? I kill him. A hunter with the heart of Iskramor. Here's the coin I promised. I'll sing your praises next time I see the inside of a mead hole. That makes me very happy. I'm good. Now, it looks like you still have a foot. You said he ate your foot. Maybe you're just, you, you lack a foot, but you're still wearing a boot. That could be it. And then you disappeared because, you know, MMOs. Um, so, if you aren't familiar with the original Elder Scrolls, uh, the, the ESO on the PC, you might be wondering, well, Force, sir, how, how much Elder Scrolls is this? Um... I would say it's less Elder Scrolls and more theme park MMO with Elder Scrolls flavoring. So the flavoring comes in the world setting, clearly. 
Uh, the music in this game, I think, is amazing. When I booted up the beta here for the console, I got instant nostalgia from playing the PC version. I think they did a great job with the audio. I think that the world, the setting all looks great. It's very Elder Scrolls-y. Obviously, as you've seen, and as I mentioned, all of the quests are voice acted, so you can sort of get that immersion. Now, whether or not you think the story is good or not, obviously up to interpretation, but you can get the immersion of a fully voice acted narrative as you make your way throughout the world and the story is all unfolds. Um, the combat is a soft lock system. It's not directly you're hitting limbs, you're getting headshots like you do in Skyrim. It's that soft lock system that we've seen so far and that you'll see going forward. And then the world interactivity is certainly much more dumbed down. It's not fully physics based, so I can't like pick up these items and throw them and watch them tumble across the, the floor or whatever. Um, but they made leaps and bounds from the PC beta to where they are now to having it be that so that you can you can really pick up a lot of things in the world and interact with a lot of things. So I can search this food pot here and take what's inside. I can search the sack here and notice when I take it, it actually disappears. Um, but it's, you know, it's not me picking up this bag and tossing it, you know, it's not me pushing through this barrel and having it tumble like this thing is static, it's not moving, but it's determined that there is this seaweed inside and I can take it. And then if anyone else, uh, because it's an MMO, if anyone else is in this area, they would then not be able to take something out of this crate because I just looted it. Uh, you know, it's it, it's got that. And there are a few things like this, no, no, some items like these alchemy bottles that I can actually pick up and they disappear from the environment. The thing is though, that within some minutes or so, whatever the respawn timer is, those things will respawn. And then another adventurer comes along and he finds this guy with his missing foot and he also finds those bottles and he goes boop, 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 just like I did. Or I come back in five minutes and I do the same thing. So there are conceits because it's a multiplayer game uh, but there's certainly a lot of Elder Scrolls flavor and you know again that is a positive there was a lot this game gets reamed like terribly just like any new MMO post WoW does uh, but I think this game almost got unfairly criticized it certainly was not perfect oh here's a uh, adventurer let's I guess we'll talk to him real quick I'll continue along after this can you use that weapon friend I need your help. Just tell me what to do, dude. Uh, there's a necromancer here, but I can't find him. He must be in the catacombs beneath the shrine. That's the only place that makes sense. All right, I got it. Something has to be done about these undead. No the problem. Dead walk at Sky Shroud. There's an evil power radiating from within the shrine, but the door is locked. In the Skald's Tales, Every dragon shine had a priest. If we could speak with Sky Shroud's priest, he could tell us how to get in. I hope you have better luck at the shrine than I did. Watch yourself in there. All right, kill the necromancer, done dead, all that stuff. Um, so this this game got got reamed out, and some of it certainly fair and and reasonable criticisms. There's many things to be criticized. The combat, I think, is one of them. It's just not. It's not what you expect from an Elder Scrolls game. It feels a little bit floaty. Again, here's this guy. You know, I'm aiming right here. Oh, my arrow, my, my flame bolt still hits him. Like, you know, people just coming from Skyrim are going to look at that and be like, what the hell? But it's a conceit. It's a, it's a balance between what we would call, what MMO players would call, the traditional tab target system and then a, an action system in, in which, like, I can actively block. I can interrupt attacks. Um, there is again this uh, this dodge roll that I can do. Oops, that's not it. This dodge roll that I can do to to, to avoid attacks. Like, it's a, it's a it's a mix between the tab target and the action combat system, but it's certainly not the physics based uh, system that you saw in Skyrim. So the combat's not perfect, but besides the combat, I really like everything else about the game. Like, yeah. There were some design decisions that I weren't thrilled with, but I, I, I recall, but off, honestly, off the top of my head, I can't like pinpoint specifically what those were because it was so long ago. I played when the game originally launched on PC, which I think was over a year ago at this point. Uh, but besides the combat, I really, I liked it. Like, I liked it. I liked the world. I liked the setting. I liked all that stuff. The problem, though, 
is that the, the combat's a pretty in, important element, right? <laughs> it, and it's not horrendous, it's just not, it's not great, it's not fantastic. So, it's really gonna be, you know, whether or not you're okay with those conceits in a game like this, it, it, it really comes down to, are you okay with a game that's like Elder Scrolls, a little watered down, you know? Is that something that you're thrilled with? Well, I'll tell you this. Uh, now that I'm sitting down playing this beta, I'm actually looking forward to jumping back into this game. Now, is it going to be for months and months? No, probably not. Maybe a few weeks, maybe a couple of months if, uh, you know, feeling lucky, feeling good. But I don't expect it to be like something that I'm playing for years on end going forward. But man, oh man, they've built a beautiful world. And uh, it's lots of story. And it's an Elder Scrolls universe to explore, even if it's not a traditional single player one at that. All right, let's open this thing up here. I'll talk to this guy in the sun. This is very, oh, this is very cool looking. Look at this with the sun splash behind him. All right, let's chat. Priest, dragon priest. Maggot, you dare summon me? He's not very happy to see me. Can you comprehend the power I once had? Why should I help you with anything? Uh, someone desecrated your shrine, how awful. Yes, I can sense them. Some worm defiled this place. You are now my will incarnate, mortal. Enter the barrow and kill this worm. All right. You need to ask, but once everyone knew the ritual, three rune stones unlock the door. They're placed in prominent positions around the shrine. Find them and put them on their pedestals around the door. Then you'll gain entrance. Now go. Turns out uh, dragon priests, specifically this one, not the nicest people. They're really not the nicest, not the nicest, not even a little bit. All right, we got to uh, collect these rune stones. See, so notice, here's a great example. Were this Skyrim, I could pick up this bow and arrow, and I could loot this guy for the gear that he's wearing, but it's not. It's, you know, like, we, like I mentioned, like I already said, I'm going to be a broken record today, but... Like I already said, it's uh, it's an, a theme park MMO with conceits of, or a, th a theme park MMO with the conceits that you get with an MMO, and uh, some nice Elder Scrolls flavoring. And I I say nice wholeheartedly, as I it's a lot that I really did enjoy about this game. All right, let's uh, pull this sucker to us here. So let me show you some of the uh, action combat stuff so I can block this heavy attack. Well, that was that did not work out the way it was supposed to. Do that again, please. Heavy attack. I need you to hit. Come on, bro. Anytime now. There you go. Block it, and then that staggers him. And then if I respond with a heavy attack, that knocks him down. And th th this is for all the people who didn't play the PC version of the game, just to give you an idea of the different things you can do in combat. Now, besides blocking heavy attacks as a, a method of stunning them, there's also people who cast spells. I think this guy will be one of them. And then they'll glow with these red sparkles that I can interrupt. Okay, so let's let's just wait till he does his spell. So there it is. We can interrupt that. That is going to stun him. And then in a similar way, we can heavy charge an attack. No matter what weapon that you're using. A two-handed sword, a one-handed dagger, a sword and shield, or a big staff like we're using here. No matter what weapon you're using, you can, you can do that heavy charge attack. And that'll knock someone down after you've, uh, after you've interrupted something like a big attack or whatever or spell this guy just flipped over me and this is why you play in third person this is exactly why you play in third person oh, i should i wanted to dodge that oh well i don't have anything bound to my quick slot either i should probably bind my potions to my quick slot huh i haven't done that yet so i don't even know that process we can do that here though that's fine all right so there's that first thing i'm gonna move down because again because it's an mmo he is going to respawn notice how he just disappeared He'll probably be returning soon enough. Uh, let me check about quick slotting here. So we'll go into consumables. And yes, we can assign this. We can assign, let's do the better health potion. Wait, wait, wait. Assign, yes. Assign this and we'll assign this right here. Okay, beautiful. And then we could assign the sips of magicka. So we could assign this and we'll assign this to here. Okay. And then if I go back and then we go like this, then I can cycle through which ones I want. And if I want to use a health potion, I can use a health potion. Now, something I really enjoy about this console MMO compared to, say, recently, Neverwinter. 
the free-to-play uh, action. Neverwinter is a gr great example of a game that I think has a better combat system. Uh, but Neverwinter, the UI is a hot mess. And I, I really feel like as a PC MMO gamer, when this game came out, there was a lot of uh, people upset about the, the basic UI and the lack of uh, the lack of add-on uh, capabilities and stuff that really took away a lot of information that PC MMO players really wanted. But I feel like on the console, this looks a million times better. Not only graphically, but it does. Uh, not only graphically, but the the just not having to deal with this cluttered UI is fantastic on the console. I think it's great. I, I, I feel like this is a visually much more pleasing um experience to have than Neverwinter was. And I only mentioned that because it's a console MMO that recently launched that I played. It was only a couple of weeks ago, actually, that that thing came out. So with these two things sort of back to back, I think it's sort of fair to draw at least discussion point comparisons here. Uh, so let's talk about some of this stuff, um, like the different classes, as it were. Um, I am playing as the, well, I can just show you here. <laughs> show you here. Do you want a character pain? Uh, I am, uh, well, we've got the different things here. As you level up, you can increase your magicka, your health, and your stamina. And there's also boon effects uh, from stuff you'll pick up in the world. But since, you know, we just started, so we don't have that now. Now, where I'm playing as the Dragon Knight. And with the Dragon Knight, you've got access to uh, three trees of class skills. And you, you see, notice, so here for the Dragon Knight, the Ardent Flame, the Draconic Power, and the uh, Earthen Heart. And if I recall correctly... This was sort of like, Ardent Flame was like the flame caster tree. Uh, Draconic Power was like the crowd control self buff tree. We've got Dark Talons, Dragon Blood, Spiked Armor, Dragon Leap, Inhale. Um, some some basically buffs and, and healing and reflective spells. And then Earthen Heart was just the straight up like CC tree. And I think this was also the tanking tree. Draconic power and earthen heart with a tanking tree. But yeah, so every class has their three specific trees and you've got access to a set number of spells. Now, as you can tell, there's only so many buttons on the controller and this was similar with the PC. You had only so many slots in your hotbar. Um, you have a lot more skills than you've got room for in, in your hotbar, basically. Uh, so you make a lot of choices. So every class has their own individual three trees and there's four classes and let's that's changed. That's how it was. Uh, before but there are so many skills that you get from weapons and armor even you get skills from armor that you can use and buffs from armor then there's also world magic there's uh, racial skills that you can get and then there's uh, this crafting stuff with things like alchemy blacksmithing uh, clothing enchanting provisioning and woodworking clothing uh, so yeah lots and lots of skills like I'm specifically going to be focused uh, I'm specifically going to be focused, in fact, I have a skill to spend here. I'm specifically going to be focused on Destruction Staff. And actually, I want to pick up Destructive Touch here. This is a little knockback ability. And then we're going to bind that. I think I'd like to bind that to... Uh, let's change this here, what we have. We're going to assign this to there. And then we're going to go... We have a skill unused in our Ardent Flame. That's our grip. And we can assign this to here. Okay. So now I've got a knockback that I can use. And uh, any melee enemies run up on me, I can knock them back into my firewall, for example. So I can, like, walk up to this guy, I'll put down a firewall, and then I'll knock him back. And he's going to be sitting on there. He's like, oh, no, that's that's a bummer. And I can just knock him back again. That's <laughs> uppercut him right in the face. Uh, so the, the point of me talking about that, though, is uh, that what, what class you pick does determine, obviously, your three class-specific skill lines. But in a lot of cases, a lot of your skills will come from your weapons, the specific weapons that you use and or the armor that you use. Um, so most of the skills that I'm going to be using, and you can hot swap there, you can basically have a one weapon swap. So I can have a sword and a shield and then have a specific skill lineup. And then I can have my destruction staff and have a specific skill lineup. That's what I did on the PC and that's probably what I'll do here as well. Um, so point being, can I knock him back? Yeah, I can. Beautiful. I didn't know because some, some, I think certain like enemies can't be CC'd. Oh, there's a little bit of a frame dropping there. I have noticed that. It seems like it, it's not, hap it hasn't been happening a lot, but I have noticed uh, on a, ooh, I got a blue item. 
Oh, it's a collectible. Oh, I was hoping it was a weapon. That makes me sad. <laughs> I was hoping that was a weapon. I thought, that sounds like a destruction staff item, doesn't it? All right, we've picked up the three things. Now we can go do the ritual because we want to get in there and we want to uh, kill that necromancer. At the very least in this video, that's what I'd like to do. Uh, but the point being is that this game does have classes, uh, but beyond the classes, a lot of your... A lot of your... Uh, specialization will come from the type of armor that you use like for example the more light armor that you have equipped you get light armor experience and then with the light armor experience you get things like increased magicka regeneration and i believe damage and stuff like that or if you use heavy armor it's going to make you tankier if you use medium armor it'll make you more proficient with doing melee or bow damage um, just as a few different examples so you get that and then you've got a lot of skills from your weapons and uh, yeah, so it, compared to ESO, or excuse me, compared to traditional Elder Scrolls games, um, yes, you do have to select a class, and yes, that does determine some of what you have access to, but most of what you'll be using and most of what you have access to, everyone has access to it. Uh, but yeah, you do have to make that decision of class, and that is going to determine some of the things that you can do. All right, so we got to enter Sky Shroud Borrow and defeat the necromancer and we will do that and it looks like there's some other real people in here too so i can interact with a few of these urns and stuff and a lot of this is going to be very basic stuff and you'll be wondering of course why you're telling all this we know all this well i i do assume that there's a lot of people who are watching this that uh, didn't play the pc version of the game so i'd like to go over i'd like to at least cover some of that basic stuff you know i'd like to at least cover some of that basic stuff Talk to this dragon priest here. I stand once more at the seat of my power. I am a specter, a mere shade, forced to watch as a necromancer defiles my body. Kill him. You got it. This guy is no nonsense. He is not fooling around. So a couple of these things I can interact with, but not everything. Oh, wait, I thought there was someone else walking around in here. Was that wrong? Oh, here he is. This doofus. He's not doing anything. So welcome to an MMO. There are other people in your world, and yes, you can just clip right through them. He's like chilling out, and I can interact with him. What does that even do? Well, he's bouncing all over the place. Thank you, latency. All right, you know what? Forget it. I don't care. We're gonna kill this. Uh, we're gonna kill these uh, little followers here, and eventually, this guy's gonna come up on me. I'm gonna say no. I'm gonna knock you into the firewall. I'm gonna knock you again. Oh, you're dead. Okay. We're gonna do a nice heavy attack on that dude summoning his friend. And we leveled up. That's what all that color was. We picked up a new Infernal Staff, too. That might be some more damage over the one that... Praying to this guy. Let's go to third person. And that's it, basically. He says, well done, worm. And then, like, I... Di I, 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 like, helped him out, man. And he's not even doing anything nice for me. Whatever. Let me search for evidence here of what's going on. And here's this teleporting doofus. Scroll of Banishment. Severin Charnus. The vile practice of necromancy is for necromancy is forbidden within the Lion Guard. You're hereby banished from the Covenant Domains. Are there any other additional pages? No, that's that's it. So this dude was banished. Take the water. Take the lockpick. And I need to go talk to the hunter again. Now that we've taken care of the necromancer, we'll talk to the hunter. Uh, so I suppose I pretty much accomplished what I wanted to with this video. I wanted to show you some gameplay. I wanted to show you a little bit of how it looked on the, uh, on the console and how it looked playing with the controller. The undead are gone. What did you do? The covenant here? Trolls blood, I have to warn the village. I'll head back. See if you can find any of the other villagers on the island. We may have to evacuate soon. Sounds good. I wouldn't have thought those milk drinkers would leave their cozy taverns to come down here. I'll have to get this wound seen to then. I'm going to need my sword arm. If that necromancer was working for the Covenant, we're all in danger. I'll head back to the village to prepare our defenses. You will need to search the island for villagers and send them back to Bleak Rock Village. Good luck. That sounds good. Thanks a lot, dude. 
And thank you for watching this video. Hope you enjoyed it. Uh, again, I think I, I pretty much accomplished what I wanted to do. I just wanted to show you uh, a little bit of gameplay, uh, talk with you a little bit about the game, some of the fundamental basics, and then, again, what I recall my impressions being from the PC version. Like, I want I want to play this. I want to give this a little bit of time. What I'm really hoping is that some of my good friends uh, decide that they are also interested in checking out this game because that gives me even more incentive to to devote some time so that I can play with them and do some dungeon diving and fun stuff. Now, if you're wondering, Forrest, why aren't you showing us stuff a little bit later? Uh, it's it's pretty simple. I just got access to the beta today, um, and it's only going to be up for like another couple of hours. So I figured, you know, it's better show you a little bit of something than nothing as opposed to waiting till I get to like level 15 or so and I actually have like a full plethora of abilities. I can show you some of the mini dungeons and stuff. Now, after I'm done recording this video and uploading it to YouTube, I am going to spend some more time with this because I'm having fun. Uh, and if I do get some decent footage, I might make up some follow-up videos and, and give you some more of my impressions and all of that. Oh, poor little wabbit. Give me your guts. Thank you. Uh, but thank you so much for watching. Once again, hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, stay tuned. I, I think I'll do some more ESO. I can't believe I'm saying this again. But I think I'm going to do some more ESO uh, again in the future. I don't believe there is another beta between now and the launch in June. I don't think there is. Uh, so with that said, it, unless there's one follow-up video almost immediately after, uh, my next coverage might not be until the launch comes out. But I don't know, man. I, I liked the game, despite its one glaring major flaw, which is the combat, which is, you know, still not stellar. But it's fine. It's not great, but, you know, it's not the most awful thing in the world either. There's a lot of potatoes here. Give me all those potatoes. Here, give me that potato. Give me those potatoes. What are you doing? Can I not get those? I want to get these. No. Oh, it's this damn wolf, isn't it? <laughs> all right, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys later. Have a fantastic afternoon. And take it easy. It really looks better than I remember the PC version looking. I mean, we've still got that terrible... You know, we can't really see very far, but the lighting is great. It looks pretty good. I mean, especially for a console version of an MMO. This is pretty damn good looking. Not gonna lie.